It seems like you were right all along. I'm so sorry I'm about you, Pinky. Pinky is indeed much harder than it may appear, and it was wrong of me to think that my life was any harder than yours. What? No way! Twilight, your life is way harder than mine. I don't know how you keep all these loose schedules in order. It's crazy! I nearly fell apart in just one day. I can't even imagine what living this every week is like. I shouldn't have gotten so angry at you for being too busy for my party. Pinky, it's okay. Not every pony was made to be good at following checklists or keeping track of so many studies. But I guess I owe an apology to Rarity, too. I shouldn't have said fashion was an easy job. You put so much work into color coordination, proper design technique, and so many complex sewing patterns I can't remember half of. I suppose that puts us all in the wrong now, doesn't it? Yeah, that's what it looks like. So, what should we do now? Can we please switch our jobs back? I can't stand looking at any more lists. <laughs> uh, no offense. And none taken. But yes, I think each of us has learned our lesson for now. Just remember, Every pony is fighting a storm you can't see, so it's important to be patient, understanding, and kind. And cut. That's a wrap for season two. Get the test subjects memory wiped and back to their cells. Uh huh. Where is every pony? What's happening? This one wasn't a very successful show compared to Gen 4, so we got orders from management to cancel the series and start planning for a new one. I'm thinking we can reuse some of the set pieces from down here. Set pieces? No, I don't think any of these will work. Hasbro said they want to try something experimental for the next series. Probably one aimed at the older fans the franchise picked up after friendship is magic. Who are you two? Are you human? But I never went through the portal. This is still Equestria. How did you get here? Hmm. Actually, forget what I said before. I think I just got the perfect idea for our next show. Which pony is that? Subject 40, sir. She was the main protagonist of The Last Generation, including spin-offs like Pony Life and the Equestria Girls. She's proven to be pretty popular among fans, but the whole Alicorn thing was a big turn-on. I see. Hmm. Stay back! Get away from me! Tell the crew to rig the cameras around the facility so we can begin filming immediately! It'll be best to capture her reactions while they're fresh. Should we administer the scheduled memory wipe, sir? Yes, and assign Subject 40 to join Cast 01. You will have a meeting to discuss this further before filming our next show, considering things will have to be run a bit differently around here to adjust. But I do believe this little pony has found the solution to both of our problems. <laughs> oh, and I do agree that the alicorn bit was too much, so it's best to take away the wings. Actually, remove the horn too while you're at it, just to play it safe. Understood. Subject 40's files will be prepared for an immediate surgery to transition her into becoming an Earth Pony. Where are my friends? Subject 40, if you continue to act out, you will receive punishment applied with electric shock. Please comply and follow us to your testing chamber. Where am I? The lower floors of Fawcett 01 in the Equine Division of Character Containment and Research. If you come with us quietly, I promise that your cooperation will be rewarded. Yes, of course, rewarded. With pretty jewels and books, along with any magical trinket you would like. Sounds good? No, I want my friends. Eh, worth a shot. But, sir, you are aware that Subject 150 is in Cast 01 as well, correct? Generation 1 of Subject 40 and Subject 150 have a... history, if you get what I mean. I'm sure it's nothing we can't handle. Let's just hope the memory wipe goes as planned so we can hold that meeting quickly. Ah! Hello, Subject 40. I bought my daughter one of your toys last week. Purple is her favorite color, you know. 
Wh what is this thing? This? I'll watch our surgical duo for erasing all memories up to this point in time. What? No! My friends, my family, my home! I, I don't want to forget them! Please don't do this! Honestly, Subject 40, there's no need to worry, my dear. You don't even know your name after this operation, let alone that fake world you used to perform in. Fake? Why, of course! Everything you lived through for the past ten years was nothing but a mere fabrication! We let you run across our elaborate stage, struck on so much morphine. I'm fairly surprised you can still process any thought at all the while our expertly hidden camera crew recorded all your adventures for television. A cartoon called My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Children loved it. Then this is much easier to produce than real animation. But, but how? When I get out of here, I'm telling Princess Celestia and she's going to- Celestia? Oh, you mean Subject 129? I performed an operation to remove her wings and horn just last week. She's locked in Cast 05 with the rest of the failed royal characters. I'm surprised you didn't wonder why she vanished so suddenly. You really seem to ask a lot of questions. This is slavery. This is abuse, torture. How has nobody found out about this? The staff here normally isn't very talkative, darling. And I'm only chatting when I'm bored and that's... Well, that's the most of the time. But you don't need to care because your memories will be wiped in five... Wait! Please don't! Four, I'll do anything, just let three, me go! Stop it, stop two, it, stop it! One. I said stop! Facet 01. All guards report to the equine division and return subjects to their cells for blackout and repair. Any escaped subjects are to be contained or terminated. Move quickly. Go. Now. So, I believe everyone is aware why I've called this meeting for lead staff of Fossil One, correct? Is it about how I um, I got a little bit of a cause? I, I haven't really been paying attention to your creepy experience, but I'm too drunk there yet. Yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> I find it amusing that the alcoholic janitor has been able to piece together such an accurate response. While the rest of my staff refused to even look me in the eye about it. Well, ma'am, after the incident, we updated our employee introductory policies. Would you like me to redo the report? All right. Give me our new report. There are a total of eight facets in the equine district. You are lucky to be assigned to facet 01 as it is the most well-kept and maintained containment center. However... The majority of Facet 01 was redacted or exterminated after an incident at the end of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, where Subject 40 triggered a massive blackout across the building in a failed memory wipe session. Surviving subjects were immediately contained and witnesses of the escaped anomalies were formally dealt with. All 144 escapees were accounted for and disposed of except for classified, who are still being searched for by security personnel. Facet 01 now only houses 66 test subjects, a much smaller number than the other buildings of the equine district. Yet it seems to be for the best, as this facet contains some of the more powerful subjects that need to be heavily guarded. On a similar note about containment policies, unless a subject is in the showcase lineup department for toy line modeling or staging a show, they are to be kept in their assigned cast containment. Failure to follow these instructions will result in a termination and mind wipe. Very good. Thank you, boy. Now, while we're discussing a breach of the company's policies, I believe it's fair to ask what your plans are for Dr. Henry Foss. This man has been running around Fawcett One, making a mockery of our work. Why have you been allowing such anxious and stable behavior? Ma'am, Do Dr. Frost has proved to be an extremely valuable asset to this facility. He's indispensable and cannot be replaced. How so? 
We put him in charge of Cast 01, which is made up of our most important test subjects. Every character in Cast 01 must be monitored very closely and contained at all costs. Dr. Frost is the only man in the entire company able to contain Subject 150 by keeping her docile. Every other staff member we've sent in has either been dismembered or gutted to a fatal extent. Yeah, he's right. Without Henry, we wouldn't have anything stopping Subject 150 from just killing everyone and walking out the front door. But there's something that makes her so loyal to Henry that she's willing to stay here in Cast 01's cell. I see. And now that Subject 40 is being added to Cast 1 today, it truly is the most important group to monitor in the entire district. If this doctor truly is able to contain Subject 150, as you say, then I suppose I understand why you allow him to bend the rules on occasion. Where is he now? Should be arriving any moment now, ma'am. Probably late again, because you Mars have helped me set up more cameras around the building again. I get you want this next show to attract an older audience, but I don't know how much creepy horror slash slavery nonsense the public is gonna watch before they start to get to this all your ridiculous- I'm here! I'm here! I made it! So sorry I'm late, but there were so many cameras, and the hallways here are like a maze. We should really make an actual map instead of navigating like a first-person game of Pac-Man. Hi. What's this? Your latest assignment. Subject 40 has finished recovering from our redesigning operations and is now ready to join Cast 1. We have left her with the rest of the characters in the recess lobby, where you will be picking her up after the bell to act as a private escort and explain the rules. Her memory wipe was never rescheduled, so she may prove to be a bit difficult. Really? Oh man, poor thing. Uh, I mean, I'll be on my way to get her right now. One more thing before you go, Dr. Frost. As you may know, this week, we are going to be giving you a new task. Every evening, you are to take Cast 1 to your assigned stationary home unit to help them relax around their newest audition. The close bond you have built with Subject 150 has proven to be extremely useful. From what I've heard. And if we could replicate that bond of loyalty and trust between the other ponies of Cast One, we shouldn't have anything to worry about moving forward. That seems a bit extreme, toying with her trust like that. I mean, that would be horrible to trick them in such a cruel way. And I don't really like the new methods you're putting in place for this next show. I mean, come on, you guys already dropped a TV on my head, can't you cut me a break? Besides, Twilight, uh, well, Subject 40, I guess, is with the other ponies now, right? I'm sure she'll be fine until I get there. Hello? Any pony? I... Ow. It's still sore. I really wish they never took away my horn. Or my home. Or my family. Or my friends. Or... <gasps> Rarity? Rarity, it's really you! Oh, thanks, Celestia. I'm so relieved to see a friendly face. I still hardly have a clue where I am. Do I know you? You don't remember me? Or what happened to Equestria? She doesn't need to remember whatever happened on your petty little show, you bitch. That's not our concern here. We're more focused on the future of this franchise. Honestly, honey, you should be asking about my life instead of your own. It's all news to us. That's Majesty. Once her scars are finished healing, she's gonna have my very own toy line. Maybe a movie, too. I won't push it. She already has a big head. Oh, please. And what exactly would you know about being big-headed, you wretched doormat? I bet you'll be terminated when the staff finally gives up on getting any stories out of you. Y'all best be leaving Miss Shalone, or else I may break that pretty little horn right off your skull. Wait, Fluttershy? Big Mac? How dreadful! Fluttershy's boy toy has come to ruin my fun. Fine then, if she's too cowardly to ever speak for herself, I suppose it's only fair if they gave her a guard dog. 
I swear, you're so rude sometimes. I'm sorry, I'm rude? Well, hey, don't ignore me. Rarity, get back here this instant. We are not finished talking. Yikes, what a spoiled brat. Is she really getting her own show? Yeah, I wish I could say the same for the rest of us. Do y'all remember being on that last show? They didn't wipe your memories? I guess I do, yeah. I mean, that's what everyone's been saying. But I still don't understand what happened to my home. So, it's true then. You remember being in the showcase lineup. Oh, you must tell me everything. I want all the little details. Leave her alone, Blue Blood. She's the newbie. Oh, I'm well aware of that. My lovely assistant, Star Swirl, has kept me informed of all newly rebooted subjects. I take pride in my work. Very dedicated. It is the true marking of a bold character and a loyal sidekick. Uh-huh. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Anyway, about that show you were on, I'm very eager for a piece of the spotlight myself, so... <laughs> meeting someone with a hint of experience could do me some good. Look, you seem really nice, Mr. Blueblood. I just... Actually, fuck it. Nobody here seems interested in being polite anyway. Excuse me? Like I'm being reminded every five minutes. This isn't equestria anymore, so I'm not going to parade around as a symbol of friendship when every pony here is too scared or too stubborn and mean to even consider making friends in the first place. So, if that's how it's going to be, I don't want to waste any of my time listening to some rejected prince wannabe inflating his own ego for half an hour. I have real work to do, like figuring out how to get out of this horrible place. So, if you'd excuse me, I think you've already... No, please, stay for a moment. The pleasure is all mine. Are you kidding me? I was the element of magic. I'm going to kick your flay. Oh, no magic. Right, forgot about that. So, I'll just be on my way. I'd say it was nice meeting you, but that would be a lie. And honesty is very important to keep Harmony alive. Goodbye. We're all scheduled for more testing because of the injuries left by the blackout riots. Did you know you have so many subjects in that mob that they plan to make new ponies from scratch? Can you imagine? Rumor has it that only one subject escaped capture and made it outside without being terminated. Wouldn't have happened if they'd posted me as guard. I hope we don't get exterminated if all of Fasten 01 is cancelled in some sort of elaborate cover-up. I know Hasbro would be done for if anyone found out about these testing facilities. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just getting frustrated, but that's no excuse to be so mean. I should have kept my big mouth shut. Are you okay? <laughs> you can't avoid me! I'm a prince! I'm going to make it in the next series! Just you watch! You think you're better than me? Is that it? <laughs> I'll show you who's better than- Star Catcher! Here back so soon? What? Where? Ah! Star Catcher! The only other pony here as fair and beautiful as I am! <laughs> I swear, once I show these pesky humans what a charming pair we can make, they'll be begging us to join their toy lines. I, I can't stand to be trapped here among such peasantry any longer. Come, Star Swirl. Ugh. Yes, sir. Jeez, everything moves so quickly here. I can hardly keep up. But are you alright? I never got to ask earlier. I'm... I'm fine. Don't worry about it. That's a relief. Uh, I'm Twilight Sparkle. You look familiar. Uh, you're Lightning Dust, right? H how did you know my, my name? Oh, um, lucky guess? A, a lot luckier than me, then. That's okay. It's nice to meet some pony here who isn't crazy. Seriously. Would you like to be friends? Wait, do you guys know what friendship is here? A lot of you all seem to be panicking or mean. Friendship? I'd watch your tongue if I were you, newbie. Or the gods may cut those treasonous vocal cords right out of your throat. Gods? You, you mean like alicorns? No, never an alicorn. The humans are our gods here. They probably wouldn't appreciate you spreading all this friendship propaganda in their prison yards. So tread carefully, naive spirit. Why would you call them gods? All they do is hurt you. 
They hurt every pony here. Do, do you mean everyone? Huh? What? You truly are a sinner, aren't you, Twilight? Why do you refuse our gods with such passion and withdrawal? Only by bowing to their power and submitting control to the humans will you truly find peace. This isn't anywhere for peace to be found. From what I've seen so far, it's a testing facility where innocent ponies are used as lab rats. Some of these operations and experiments seem to be more along the lines of torture than anything else. If there was a god, do you really think they'd want to see all of us suffer like this? No, of course not. But we've been bad. We need to learn our lesson, and maybe if we're better next time, the pain will stop. Has everyone here lost their minds? What did they do to you? Everyone else here is just used to it, Twilight. You're just having a hard time adjusting. Because this is wrong. It's all wrong. I keep telling myself I want to go home, but then I keep remembering that my home was never even a real place. All of our fates are in the hands of the gods now. And what can we do about it? It's not like we have hands of our own. It was meant to be. I think I'd rather have Majesty insult me for the rest of the recess period than listen to this nonsense. Wait. Twilight? Wh where... Where will you go after this? What do you mean? There are eleven cast groups in Fawcett 1. Cast 11, cast 10, cast 9, cast 8, cast 7, cast 6, cast 5, cast 4, cast 3, cast 2, and the group I'm in. Cast 1. But, but I don't know why they still have you here. Because all eleven cast groups are, are full to capacity with six ponies each. Well, except for, for, for my, oh. Oh, what is it? Wait, I, am I in your group? Uh, Cast one, right? I, I didn't. Hey, knock it off, you walking violet eyesore. I don't know what your deal is bothering my friend here, but if you think I'll go easy on you just because you're the newbie, then you got whoa, another whoa, thing coming. calm down. I didn't mean to scare her, I swear. You see, my, my name is Twilight Sparkle, and I'm just as trapped as the rest of... Huh? W wait a second. We can just leave whenever we want? What are we all doing standing here? You can't go anywhere, dumbass. Your collar is yellow. What does that mean? I just saw that other pony leave. I think Starcatcher was her name? Right! She has a green collar. The, the green collars let you freely roam in closed parts of the building during certain hours. You, you can only earn those for cooperating with the faculty staff and... Be, being a good test subject. Or by being a big suck-up by kissing the manager's ass. Gusty, she's our friend. Yeah, but that doesn't mean I'm not right. You do have friendship here? That's great. At least we have somewhere to start from now, right? <coughs> Wrong. We aren't friends yet, and I don't like you very much, so maybe we will never be. And if I catch you bothering dust again, I'll snap your spine like a toothpick with the blunt force trauma caused by being hit on the head with a twister. Memoir! Thank goodness. I was so worried I- oh. Miss you. Are you another human? One of the bad ones? What? No, I mean, kind of. I'm human for the most part, but I don't think I'm bad. I mean, I hope not. Okay, uh, sir. I think I need to get to my room, but I don't know where it is. Please, just call me Henry. Sir is way too formal for me. And, yeah, I can help you. Subject 40, Twilight Sparkle, right? Yeah, that's right. Lovely. Then you're in cast 01. And don't worry about the food here. I know they normally give nutrition injections or drugged pellets. Well, just saying it makes me gag. No, each caretaker is allowed to feed their cast group, and today I bought you all Honeycrisp apples from the local market. I also got some sugar cubes, too, so here. It can get kind of crazy in there, so you'll need the energy to meet everyone. You're serious? You're being nice to me? Uh, yes? And there's no catch? You're not going to threaten me, attack me, have a nervous breakdown, start spewing out crazy nonsense. You're just a normal guy being friendly. Why? <laughs> Twilight, I see the ponies in Casto 1 as my family, considering I lost my own a few years back. 
I appreciate their company, and I try to make their time here as comfortable and as enjoyable as I'm able to. I know it's kind of crazy and scary here at first, but you'll get used to it. Your roommates are very kind ponies, just a bit troubled after everything they've been through. Give it time, and I promise you'll start to make friends once you get to understand this place a bit more. No strings attached. Honest. I'm sorry. Was that weird? Did I make it weird? God, I'm so sorry. Uh, do you still want the sugar cube? Here you go. Um, thank you, Henry. I really appreciate it. Okay, let me give you a rundown of the group. Don't worry, it's a one-way mirror, so they can't see us while we're out here. To be more informative, I'll just read through their files for you, just in case they'll say something important. Subject 124, also known as Lightning Dust. Once a cocky and antagonistic character, it's almost as if Subject 124 has become the complete opposite of her former self after the recent memory wipe. 124 is now extremely timid and anxious, often hiding away or cowering from any major commotions that other subjects of Casta 1 may cause. She seems to be slightly deluded as well, constantly insisting she will become the best flyer in the land, even after her wings have already been removed, and she remains determined to be the stunt pilot of some kind. Staff have often found 124 attempting strange stunts and activities in an attempt to become airborne or show her agility in obstacle courses she'll build in the courtyard during recess gatherings. In one of these stunts, 124 broke her left hind leg and has become alarmingly quiet since then. She is still very social yet cowardly, but seems to be giving up on most of her stunt activities, something that management hopes to bring back with a future mind wipe to give her more of a daring personality that teens will enjoy. Subject 124 went through a race change from Pegasus to Earth Pony because the higher-ups saw no real reason to keep two racing-themed Pegasi, Subject 30 being the other, in future gen productions. She was planned to be a swift runner, yet after surgery was performed to stitch up her broken hind leg, chances of 124 running it quickly enough to qualify for proper character roles are very low. Subject 107, also known as Gusty. It is rumored that a memory wipe was once scheduled as staff planned to change Subject 107's rude and brash personality, as it was not very appealing to younger audiences, yet this operation never seemed to occur for unknown reasons. 107 is very aggressive, snarky, bitter, and pessimistic about most things. She seems to get along nicely with other subjects of Cast 01, yet is aggressive to any outsiders due to having a protective nature around her unit members. She was the first to warm up to the containment cell supervisor, Dr. Henry Frost. Oh, hey, that's, that's me. <laughs> Who also seems to spend an unusual amount of time with Cast 01 outside of the test chambers. Further investigations of this employee will be filed into another document, but it will be known that 107 will defend their human handler from other subjects and jump into a lot of fights at the courtyard. It is common for her to need small bandages and stitches after some of these fights, yet thankfully most only result in minor bruising for both subjects. Subject 107 has received no major surgeries or race changes, yet they did have half of her horn forcibly removed. This was to prevent 107 from using any powerful attack spells on staff whenever she would have bursts of anger or fight with other subjects. Is this helping? It's making me very confused and nervous, so no. Don't get me wrong, I love learning new things, but... This is a lot to take in at once. <laughs> oh, huh, my bad. I tend to get carried away with these readings. I just love being organized and notated so well. It's great! <clears throat> anyway, I'll make these next two shorter. Subject 70, also known as Starcatcher. Probably one of the most compliant subjects in Fawcett 01, Subject 70 is normally a very friendly and relaxed soul. Her personality was only altered slightly in a past attempt to make her less dainty. Yet that resulted in Subject 70 becoming an even more princess-type persona with this operation backfired. Subject 70 now spends most of her time frolicking, conversing with imaginary animal friends, breaking out into musical numbers with instrumentals no one can hear, and carrying herself about to act as if she were royalty from an old children's film. She is very graceful and easily calmed with pretty decor like jewelry or flowers. Subject 70 has gone through no major race-changing surgeries, Yet a magical star crest was recently implanted into her forehead for experimental purposes. Her wings were also swapped with a more vibrant blue pair. Last but certainly not least, Subject 136, also known as Zipsy. Hands down, the most energetic and excitable being in the entire equine district. Nothing can top the sheer joy and enthusiasm of Subject 136, not even the well-known glee of Subject 60 from Gen 4. Subject 136 has gone through no major race-changing surgeries, yet should be handled with care and monitored closely because of her flutter pony wings, which are extremely delicate. 
Subject 136 is also to be kept away from more hostile characters, as she has already lost an eye and a hoof, both of which were being replaced in later operations. Aren't there supposed to be six ponies in every cast group? Who is the last one? I don't see her in the room. Yes, that would be Abra. She's probably hiding right now. I told her about your arrival today, and let's just say she isn't taking the news very well. I'm sorry, is she shy? Quite the opposite, actually. Here, uh, let me read her file to you, too. That might help explain things quite a bit. Subject 150, also known as Abracadabra. Initially a very cheerful and charismatic spirit, Subject 150 is now very distant. She tends to keep to herself, often giving other subjects and personnel the cold shoulder, preferring solitude in the janitorial closet of Casto 1 containment cell. The only exceptions to her silent model seem to be the other subjects in Casto 1, who 150 does leave the closet to converse with quite often. She spends a lot of time in said closet, out of our camera's views, but it is theorized that she spends a lot of time practicing powerful magic while alone. 150 is the most lethal subject in all of Fossett 01, possibly most of the equine district as well. So personnel are advised not to anger the grim and quiet unicorn. So she's a bit of a loner? That's okay. I don't see why I should be worried about meeting her. There's more, just give me a moment. Subject 150 went through a race change from Earth Pony to Unicorn, allowing her to use real magic instead of the phony witchcraft from her initial debut as a Halloween special. 150 was planned to enter Gen 4 as a rival in magic to Subject 40, that's you, Twilight, and was later replaced by Subject 104 in the final production. 150 was too cheery to be a good villain, let alone a rival, so this decision seemed justified. Staff at the time were also aware that 150 and 40 had become very close friends, practically inseparable, so 40 was subjected to a mind wipe and redesigned before appearing on the show. 150 did not take the news well and attacked the other subjects in her cast, along with any nearby personnel. While shooting her down, the staff accidentally scarred her face, covering the horrid sight with a blank mask until a future solution or surgery can be created. 150's magic began to grow alarmingly strong as well, so another race change was prepared, yet never completed as nobody was able to get too close to 150 without being blasted to ashes. After about... Well, uh, it doesn't say the number, it's classified, but after an undetermined amount of staff deaths, 150 was left as a unicorn and transferred to Casto 1, where she could be closely monitored. The subject's bracelet was then altered to electrocute her wings whenever using violent magic, yet she merely deflects the electric charges to her targets, so the only visible effect was slight burning and bleeding. Usage of such unstable and strong magic has resulted in additional bleeding from 150's eyes and horn, yet it cannot be surgically examined until a solution to tame 150's hostility is found. Wait, Abra used to be friends with me? Best friends, really, but... But now that's all been completely erased after the reboot. There's nothing you can do about it now. Twilight Twinkle died when you were brought into the world by that last memory wipe, so even though it's not your fault, I worry that Abra might not like you very much. Henry dear, I can hear you making small talk outside. I would love to meet your lovely new friend. Wait, Abra's file has another page. Is any of that information I should know before we go inside? What? Uh, no, it's, uh, it's all boring numbers and stuff. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's go inside to meet everyone. Greetings and salutations, you two. Twilight, I presume. I've heard a lot about you before this arrival. Oh, hi. Good things, I hope? Nope. All bad. Just insults from me. Yes, but the language you used was so colorful. I can tell you've already made a very big impression. Are you kidding me? This is the one who caused that giant blackout? She's nothing but bad luck! Really? You must be a rather bold pony, then. Speaking of bold... Henry, dearest, you look very alert. When was the last time you slept? Me? I don't know. I've, uh, I've been really busy lately. I'll sleep tomorrow once I finish more work later tonight. Don't want to hear it, old man. Agreed. You said the same thing yesterday and the day before that. That's it. Lay down here and now. You're going to get a good night's rest enforced by the best daughters in the world. Daughters? Wait, he's your dad? Not really, since I don't see how that would make much biological sense. But he's helped us get through so much that he feels like one. Yep, like a super fun teddy bear. One you just want to hug and hug and hug and hug. <laughs> was, was that really you, Twilight? You caused that awful blackout? I think my magic did, yes. 
I'm sorry, was that bad? Oh yeah, super bad. But not nearly as bad as ever blowing up half the Equine District bad. <laughs> but still pretty bad. And bad is never good. Right? She blew up what? Oh no, was it a fatal disaster? What? No! Catastrophic's the word you're looking for. The word fatal would imply somebody died. And nobody's died around here so far. At least not to my knowledge. <laughs> yeah, no. I've seen more people die here than than anywhere else, even in my worst nightmares. Stay still! I can't! Girls, I have too much work to do! I'm sorry, I don't have time Amber, to- get your grim dark ass out here and come help me put him to bed. He's gonna work himself to death at this rate. That was low, even for you. I know, isn't it great? <laughs> However, there's no need to take such drastic measures. This is the seventh day you've gone without sleeping, Henry. That makes it a full week. I'm sorry. I must draw the line. I... Okay, I guess that's fair. Sorry, kiddo, but you know how busy I get, and... Do not fret any further. Sleep. If we continue to let our father work himself in such a manner, he's going to make his sickness worse, and... Hey, no, wait a second, Abra, I don't- Do not call me that! You are a fake, hollow shell of a person. You killed my best friend. You are a pathetic, delusional child stuck in their own memories of a drugged out fantasy world. You are nothing. I understand she's angry, but why is she so cold? If I were upset, I'd want to be around my friends for comfort. Why is she so set on being alone? I don't know. She's always been like that. Something about being super angry and violent. Giving Opera space helps her cool down and not hurt anyone. Abra doesn't seem like the type to hurt anybody. I know there are all these rumors and stories about bad stuff she did, yes, but it can't be true. Abra seems more like the type of pony to run and hide rather than start a fight. She just isn't confrontational enough. I, I don't know. Henry said that she, she needs time alone in her closet. S something about being super dangerous when she's mad? <laughs> yeah, right. I'll have to see it for myself. Subject 150 is one of the few militant red class subjects in the Fawcett 01 buildings. She is to be watched at all times and kept in Casto 1's containment unit, which thankfully isn't an issue since 150 normally hides in the janitorial closet of said unit to be left alone. However, when agitated, 150 can very easily break free of containment and rampage the facility with her dangerous magic. When transporting 150 to the courtyard or other units, staff must be armed with magic reflecting weapons and a large group. Staff have previously tried to test the limits and capabilities of 150's magic, often impressed or frightened by the results of said experiments. 150 has proved to be very powerful and must now be tested on sparingly. It is also noted that, without any surgical adjustments or operations, Subject 150's coat has changed over time to slowly obtain a few paler purple patches. It is unknown what part of her magic causes these highlights to form, but they seem to be spreading without causing any harm, so it is assumed to be a genetic defect. In the end, whenever Subject 150 requests solitude, her request is to never be denied. Failure to follow this instruction will result in an immediate termination and memory wipe. When agitated, Subject 150's powerful magic becomes extremely unstable, able to immediately kill anyone within a three mile radius around her if she is drawn to lash out. Because of this, Subject 150 often locks herself in the janitorial closet for a quiet environment to cool down in, not wanting an unstable burst of anger to wipe out her cast group or caretaker. Staff learned this the hard way, unfortunately, and nearly 4,000 lives were lost during 150's first rampage. The event will be recorded in great detail through the following documents, hopefully ensuring that such a tragedy will never befall this facility again.